Thank you so much. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. So, no. <laughs> how you guys doing? Join it. Okay, next up, we have B N or yeah, B L N D. Hi, I'm Hao Ming from Glen, and everyone wants an authentic. And restaurants simply can't provide that for you. Now, think of the average university student. You, you, you have two types of options. You can either go to a restaurant, or you can go to some greasy place like McDonald's. Now, what we want to do is to be that in between. We want to be that um, in the middle there. So, we want to take these two different parties. We want to take people who want authentic food, and we want to take people who uh, like sharing their meals, and to bring that together in a fun, safe, uh, user-driven community like Airbnb and Uber. Now, I want to uh, talk about something that Deborah in the back said uh, to us one week ago. She said, eating is a social experience. So we really wanted to captivate that uh, through our app, Blend which stands for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So of course you want to know how is this app going to actually work. Now the premise of the entire app is built on comfort. So before I actually explain how the app works, why, don't, why doesn't everyone just get comfortable? Just stretch out and relax. All right, so luckily for you, the app is actually very, very easy to use and it can be broken down into five simple steps. First step, validation, so you create your account. Then you look through the possible hosts and you choose a meal. After that, you complete the transaction and then you pick up, you either pick up the meal or you dine in and finally you review it. So you say this is it either blend or blend. <laughs> right, so as I mentioned, the first step is validation. So once you open the app, you'll be greeted with this login page. So you have to create an account. Creating an account is important because we want to ensure the safety of both our diners as well as our hosts. So through this account process, you will validate your identification. You'll provide either your driver's license or your student ID. And this way, we can ensure the safety of um, both diners and hosts. Once you log in and create this account, you will be greeted with this lovely home page. Here, there will be different categories and types of foods. Um, then, uh, as you can see, there's also, you can have favorites, your messages with different hosts, uh, where your, uh, your meals are booked, as well as your profile. And so essentially you want to build up your profile like LinkedIn. You start as a novice and you move up. Um, hosts want to um, build up their profile so that they become more trustworthy um, so that diners will want to dine with them. And finally here, as you can see, there's also a map. So once you click the search bar, you can see what nearby meals are offered. Um, and then you can choose it and then you can book your meal. Hi, my name is Zeynep and I'm Glenn's marketing manager. Glenn's initial target market are university students who will be the diners. And secondly, people who love to cook, who will be the hosts. Now, our goal is to combine both of our target markets and bring them to one innovative event, which will be Blend's Cultural Food Festival. Now, at this event, we will get diners by, by getting them to pay a $5 entry fee, and they will be able to eat all they want. I mean, who doesn't love food? So, they'll be able to sign up prior to the event, and then once they come to the event, they'll be ready to use the app and they will act as judges and test all the food that the hosts make and choose which one they enjoyed the most. Now, we'll get hosts to come to this event by getting them to, by getting customer, by getting student associations, like Pakistan Student Association at Western, and getting them to bring hosts that they know that love to cook, and the host that cooks the best meal will, will win a competition, which will most likely be money. And so, going into our competition, our top three competitors are Bon Appetit, Uber Eats, and Bookalook. Now, the thing with these three competitors is that they're located in Europe because they focus on travelers, and they're high-priced. Blend focuses on university students who are, who are looking for low prices and want a cultural, authentic, home-cooked meal. So now I'm going to get into the slightly boring part. But you guys are all investors and you guys care about how we're actually going to make money here. So this is our first year, okay? So let's take a look at this. 
uh, 20,000, 20, that's about 10% of, um, of the student population, the post-secondary student population uh, here in Canada. So if we assume that they all eat uh, active users, 20,000, 20, they all eat one meal per week, and we charge a 25 cent transaction fee. So that's 25 cents of revenue per week per active uh, user. So going back to year one, um, that's $5,000 of revenue each week, and that gets us about $130,000 uh, for the first year. Now, uh, this is for the first uh, six months um, after launch because we still we are going to need six months to develop the app and take um, and market the app before it's actually released. So now if we go to year two, what you see that's different is that there are uh, more active users, but uh, there will be lower startup and operational costs, but then again a bit more HR costs. Now uh, we're expected to break even uh, soon after the second year. Now let's go to year three. Keep in mind that this is only in Canada, so we're only taking uh, Canadian uh, post-secondary students right now. But we still have 100,000 active uh, accounts. But once again, this is a bit, um, um, it's a pretty conservative one. Um, so in the first, on, on the year, third year, we're expected to make a million dollars and have a net profit of 250000 Now, this is our initial cap in just North America. Assuming that we have three meals per week, we have a bottom line of $40 million and a net operating profit of $30 million. So we actually went out, uh, talked to university students who we've never met before. Um, we didn't even know these people one week ago. And we actually captured this experience of sharing the food. They didn't know each other, they didn't know the hosts, and that's Dimitri. with local governments that regulate those services for a variety of reasons, customer safety, mm -hmm. consumer safety, uh, but also um, that's a source of revenue for them. Did you talk to anybody that has been involved in a restaurant that understands the process of getting health regulatory inspections done and the fees that they pay? And how is that going to translate into the model that you're proposing? Well, I'm, I'm really glad that you asked that. So that's why we actually got a legal department. Her name's uh, Dr. Gabriella Chan. And she really helped us through this entire process. Now, um, we drafted up uh, terms and conditions, but the most important part was to disclose the risks, right? Because this, the people here, uh, what we're providing is not restaurant food. We are going to, um, we're going to have people who don't know each other go to someone else's house and uh, have this interaction. So we are going to disclose that risk, but we're also gonna make sure that they check the box that says, okay, I understand this, and I'm willing to uh, waive all liability from blank. 
So those are the most important parts. Now, um, of course, there will be people who are a little bit weary of the whole process, and uh, there's going to be people who are a little bit conservative um, before actually stepping in. So what we actually have is, um, is are going to be tiers of validation, like what Jamie mentioned earlier. Um, so if you add more credibility, if you add your student ID, you add your driver's license, you actually uh, make yourself more accountable so that you can actually trust this person. Now, that's, those are the preliminary steps, but uh, afterwards, let's say after each interaction, there's going to be a peer review system. You get to message the person, and uh, the, diner, uh, the diner rates the host, and the host also rates the diner. So through all of that, um, we make sure that people build a reputation, and we make sure that um, this all takes place in a fun and uh, user-driven and safe environment. Mm -hmm. So like, basically, we have two concerns, the safety of the people using the app and um, our security, right? Because we don't want to be liable for anything that happens. So first, with the security, uh, we will be putting all of our efforts into ensuring that all of our clients are safe when using the app. So again, with the validation system. We encountered customers who are both risk takers as well as more conservative. So of course, with the tiers of validation, if a person is more conservative and doesn't want to go to somebody's house, um, they have more options. They can either just pick it up from a convenience store, and we actually talked to convenience stores and they said that they would act as pickup locations. So they can do that so they don't have to ever interact with the actual um, host, or um, they can just look for hosts that are much more validated. So again, it's like LinkedIn. You start at novice and then you build up. Um, build up your profile so you're more trustworthy. And then with the liabilities, Helming already mentioned, um, we'll be having um, all the terms and conditions that will waive our liabilities. So I know the time is up. Do you guys have any other questions? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Thanks, guys.